I'm here to talk to you about emotional, cognitive and behavioural engagement using digital health tools, which is my study one for my PhD. Um, I'm going to rush through the front side of this because there's a lot of information leading up to the um, findings that you actually probably want to hear about more than the method and whatnot, although the method is interesting. So to start with the managerial problem that I started with, um, chronic diseases are, or chronic conditions are on the rise and therefore they're putting strain um, on resources and in future resources too. So digital technology is one of those things that is now being amended to fit that health sphere, um, but we don't really know whether it's reliable support to actually get people to do the behaviour that they, we want them to do, right? So to start off, what, what I mean by digital supportive tools, um, I've called them SDT, supportive digital tools, rather than digital supportive tools. But they're basically tools that can deliver social support elements, okay? So the five, or some of the five elements. It connects people, provides encouraging um, messaging and feedback. Uh, it offers valuable and quality information to people. And it basically can develop um, apps and things or tools, instruments, that people can use to achieve the task. So <coughs> engagement in behaviour change is one of those things that is always um, kind of the aim of the goal, right? We want people to be engaged, we want people to continue to be engaged so that they do the right behaviours, the stuff that we want them to do. So it's been proven to um, increase the likelihood of trial or an adoption of behaviours. Um, increasingly, um, it's becoming, therefore, important as social marketing strategy and um, <coughs> health behaviour interventions, etc. And we know that customer um, engagement, consumer engagement, customer engagement, um, and the behaviour behind that has um, been explored a lot in commercial realms, but not necessarily with that social or health focus. So the PIP framework then talks about um, technology and the levels of technology that we're talking about. So there's been a lot of research that's been done um, in past, in passive technology. So what do I mean by that? I mean that one-way directional communication type technology. And then new studies that are now coming out, things like social media, apps that have been designed for specific um, health conditions or issues, are more interactive, that two-way conversation between participants um, using the technology to facilitate the communication. I'll get on to proactive in a minute. I'll come back to that. So the study one model looks at these three areas, right? It's looking at customer engagement, it's looking at the social support elements and the digital technologies that can do those two things. And we really want to know um, how consumers engage with the digital tools in a preventative health context um, and how these supportive digital tools, SDTs, um, are perceived as actually providing social support, whatever form of, of social support. So the three research questions um, were basically uh, how can the digital tools provide social support elements? How do specific features within the tools provide that type of social support? And how do consumers overall engage on that cognitive, emotional, behavioural level with the tools or while they're using the tools? So the method I used was a triangulation method. It had two stages. It was scenario testing followed by semi-structured interview. The scenario testing used the headset, which I'm going to show a picture of in a moment, um, and it recorded the screen capture of what they looked at, what they clicked on, etc., so that I could meld those two things together. And then the interview basically backed that up or added richness to the information. The two scenarios that I chose were mole checks or skin checks um, and SDI testing checks. So they were both chose, uh, both picked, chosen for um, the reason that, that it applies to most people regardless of sex or age. It's a voluntary preventative task, meaning you have to actually be motivated to make an appointment, think that you're ready for a check, etc. So the scenario testing using the lovely headset, um, which is the Emotive Epoch Plus headset with its uh, many nodes and many nodules that needed to be wetted and positioned correctly, etc., um, measured a couple of things. It measured the raw EEG data, but it also did a combined um, ongoing analysis of performance metrics, which gave you a mean, continuous means throughout the scenario of each participant, which showed engagement, interest, focus, 
excitement, stress and relaxation. Um, I'll say up front, relaxation is usually used for like meditative type studies when people are studying meditation. Um, so it's kind of low brain activity, whereas your engagement, excitement, etc., is kind of those higher levels. But they take the means of all of them, and I can see them in the chart, which you'll see later on. And then the screen capture basically recorded while they wore the headset, so I could put the two together side by side and see what they looked at and when things spiked. The interviews, as I said before, were semi-structured just to pick out where they got the engagement, uh, what social support they received, etc. So, um, main takeaway points from the performance metrics. There's a rough diagram from one of the participants um, of their journey through the metrics. Overall, participants' um, cognitive engagement was in that sort of low to medium, was in the 40 to 60 overall range out of 100. Um, this may have been due to the fact that the scenario task I gave them was to look for information. So they first and foremost experienced information which is not necessarily very engaging. However, some experienced good type of information that was engaging. So they had spikes, which I'll get to in a moment. They did try and avoid information overload once they got the main basics down pat. And you could see this throughout performance metrics where it sort of petered out and then they found something to focus on and then mo they moved on. So as far as effective, effective engagement goes, um, overall quite low. 25 to 45% was kind of the average for the participants overall um, engagements in, in that focus, in that area. Um, this may have been due to the features that they looked at um, during the actual scenario testing. Once again, lots of um, information. However, some videos and visuals initially spiked excitement, stress, performance, but they were short engagements and then it petered off. And then behavioural engagement, this is somebody looking at a page just put on there for you. So once they got the basics down, they tended to opt for more interesting information. And this is usually things that they can um, determine, um, determine definitive things about themselves or whoever they're looking for for the scenario, okay? So they would look at videos, visuals, charts, um, graphs, anything that would give them sort of an idea of whether it was relevant to them or not. As far as perceptions of social support goes, um, so this is kind of combined from the, from the interviews, not surprisingly or unsurprisingly, um, informational was obviously one of the key ones, but so is instrumental. So those fact sheets, the tools that would help them make a definitive um, decision on their own health or another person's, depending on how they viewed the scenario, they were the key ones. Appraisal really didn't come up at all, or esteem, depending on how you look at your social support elements. Emotional, they didn't really get a chance to look into that, and it's more of a personal one-on-one -on -one emotional support. Um, so it's not usually seen in digital tools and certainly not the ones that they found. And social network is kind of, they perceive that really as um, social media or, or chats and whatnot that they didn't really want to get into. A lot of people said, I think a lot of people would use this, the scenario, um, and try and sort it out themselves. So they were really looking for instrumental tools was the point of including that quote. As far as PIP insights, the information was very broad. There was a lot of information that was generic information. So if you look up STI checks, you look up mole checks, you get the basic facts that applies to everyone. People, however, were looking for um, interactive tools. They wanted to be informed of the decisions that they needed to make. And this comes into the proactive that I didn't touch on too much. Um, consumers wanted those proactive tools. They wanted the decision to be made for them, right? But they're not currently out there, and they certainly weren't in the scenario when participants were looking for um, information. Like they really were lacking that do it for me element that proactive tools can give. So the three main customer journeys found were the factual fox, the storing squirrel, and the curious cat. I know you just love my little pictures. Um, the basic difference between them was the factual fox was looking for a basic search, giving me generic information that I can apply to myself. Um, core terms were the only things they looked for, et cetera, right? They want the basic skills, uh, basic information. The storing squ squirrel, they, wanted to, they, want, they knew what they wanted and they went to look forward. They went 
looking for it, but they didn't know whether they could find it. And the curious cat really was kind of an open guided search. That's what it looks like, performance metrics. The storing squirrel looks like this. So there's not that much difference between them. Um, and the curious cat probably is the most interesting of the three, only because um, they really wanted exciting new information, but they didn't want shock value. So often in social marketing, there's that shock element to make the risk factor go up to, to promote people to go and get a check. Thank you very much. Sorry I went over.